You're buying a concert ticket on some website you've never heard of, sending $200 to a total stranger, just hoping the ticket actually shows up. What if computers could eliminate that leap of faith entirely, executing transactions automatically the moment conditions are met? Today, I'll explain smart contracts like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand exactly what they are, how they power everything from NFTs to DeFi, and why this one idea turned Ethereum into something way bigger than digital money. Most people think blockchain is just about cryptocurrency. Bitcoin sends money. Ethereum sends money. They're basically the same thing, right? Wrong. Bitcoin is a calculator. Ethereum is a computer. Bitcoin does one thing really well. It moves value from person A to person B without a bank. But Ethereum does something completely different. It runs programs. Programs that nobody controls. Programs that execute themselves. Programs that can't be stopped, altered, or cheated once they go live. Those programs are called smart contracts. Here's the simplest way to understand it. A smart contract is just code that lives on the blockchain and runs automatically when certain conditions are met. Think vending machine, not handshake deal. You put in a dollar, press B4, and the machine gives you chips. No cashier, no manager, no trust required. The machine checks the conditions, executes the trade, done. That's a smart contract. You send it some crypto. It checks whether you met the rules, and if you did, it automatically sends you something back. Could be a token, could be access to an app, could be voting rights in an organization, could be a piece of digital art. The key is, nobody had to approve it. The code just ran. Now imagine that vending machine can do anything, not just sell snacks. It could hold your money until a condition happens, then release it. It could split payments between 10 people based on rules you set. It could let you bet on the outcome of a soccer game and automatically pay the winner when the game ends. It could run an entire lending platform where you deposit crypto, borrow against it, and pay interest, all without a single human being involved. No loan officer, no credit check, no bank account, just code executing itself forever. This is why Ethereum exploded. Bitcoin let you send money without banks, but Ethereum let you build entire financial systems without banks. You could create apps that manage billions of dollars and never have a CEO. You could launch currencies that govern themselves. You could build games where the items you earn actually belong to you, not the game company. All of this runs on smart contracts. Here's where it gets wild. Because smart contracts live on the blockchain, they inherit all the same superpowers. They're permanent. Once you deploy a contract, it exists forever. They're transparent. Anyone can read the code and see exactly what it does. They're unstoppable. No government, no company, no hacker can shut them down or freeze them. And they're trustless. You don't need to trust the person who wrote the contract. You just need to trust that the code does what it says. And since the code is public, you can verify that yourself. This means a teenager in their bedroom has the same power as a Fortune 500 company. If the code works, it works for everyone. Let's make this real. Say you want to lend someone money, but you don't trust them. Normally, you'd need a lawyer, a contract, maybe collateral, definitely a lot of paperwork. With a smart contract, you just deposit your crypto into the contract. The borrower deposits collateral worth more than the loan, often 150% of the loan value. The contract automatically gives them the loan. If they pay you back on time, the contract returns their collateral. If they don't, the contract automatically liquidates the collateral and pays you. Nobody had to sue anybody. Nobody had to call a collections agency. The contract just enforced itself. This is happening right now on platforms like Aave and Compound. Billions of dollars in loans, managed entirely by code. Aave alone has facilitated over $20 billion in lending since launch. Or take NFTs. You've heard people say they're just JPEGs you could right-click and save. But that misses the entire point. The NFT isn't the image. It's the smart contract that proves you own it. When you buy an NFT, the smart contract records your wallet address as the owner. When you sell it, the contract updates the owner and sends you the money. Differentiate, some contracts even pay the original artist a percentage every time the NFT resells, forever. That means a digital artist could sell a piece for 500, watch it resell for 50,000, and automatically receive $2,500 without lifting a finger. No gallery. No auction house, no payment processor taking a cut. Just the contract, running itself, paying people automatically. Now here's what you need to understand. Smart contracts don't just copy the old system onto the blockchain. They let you do things that were literally impossible before. Take DAOs. 
Decentralized Autonomous Organizations Imagine a company with no CEO, no board of directors, no headquarters. Just a smart contract that holds money and makes decisions based on votes from token holders. If the vote passes, the contract automatically executes the decision, sends the funds, hires the contractor, launches the project. No manager has to approve it. The community votes, the contract acts. This is how some of the biggest projects in crypto actually operate. Constitution DAO raised $47 million in one week to bid on a copy of the U.S. Constitution. The entire organization was just a smart contract and a community. The organization is just code. But here's the problem. Code can have bugs. And when a smart contract has a bug, you can't just patch it like a normal app. Remember, smart contracts are permanent. If someone finds an exploit, they can drain all the money before anyone stops. This actually happened. In 2016, a project called The DAO raised $150 million through a smart contract. A hacker found a flaw in the code and stole $60 million worth of Ethereum. The community had to hard fork the entire blockchain just to reverse it. That's how serious smart contract bugs can be. It's like launching a bank vault you can never change the combination on. Then there's the cost. Every time a smart contract runs, it uses something called gas. Gas is basically a fee you pay to the network for computing power. When the network is busy, gas fees explode. People have paid $50 to buy a $10 NFT. They've paid $200 to move tokens between wallets. During the 2021 NFT boom, average gas fees hit $196 per transaction. For small transactions, this makes Ethereum almost unusable. That's why newer blockchains like Solana and Polygon are trying to compete with cheaper, faster smart contracts. But Ethereum still has the most developers, the most apps, and the most money locked in contracts. Here's why this matters to your life. Smart contracts are quietly becoming the infrastructure for a new kind of internet. Right now, when you use an app, the company controls everything. They hold your data. They set the rules. They can ban you, censor you, or shut down tomorrow. But apps built on smart contracts work differently. The rules are in the code. Your data lives in your wallet. Nobody can take it away. Nobody can change the terms. This is what people mean when they talk about Web3. It's not just a buzzword. It's the idea that you could use the internet without handing control to a dozen giant companies. This affects how you might buy things, invest, play games, vote, create, own property, and interact with strangers online. If smart contracts become mainstream, you could rent an apartment without a landlord app taking a cut. You could sell your art without a platform deciding what's allowed. You could invest in projects directly, without brokers or middlemen. You could own your social media profile and take it with you if you leave. These aren't hypotheticals. They're happening now, just early and clunky. So here's the recap. Smart contracts are programs that run themselves on the blockchain. No middleman, no trust required. Ethereum made them possible, and they power everything from DeFi to NFTs to DAOs. They're permanent, transparent, and unstoppable, which makes them powerful and dangerous. Bugs can't be fixed. Gas fees can be insane, but they let you do things that were impossible before, like running entire financial systems with no company in charge. The idea is spreading to cheaper, faster blockchains. And it's quietly building an internet where you control your stuff, not the platforms. So here's the real question. Do smart contracts actually give power back to people? Or are they just creating a new system where only coders and early adopters win?